there is nothing more deflating than the sound of air escaping from an inner tube when you're riding along. So today, let's have a look at how to repair a puncture at the side of the road so that you can continue your ride. So first things first, you want to make sure that you're not on the carriageway or the road whatsoever. So get off of that, get yourself on the pavement or in the entrance to a field, anything like that, so you are not in danger of any passing vehicles. First up then, we want to remove the wheel from the bike. So that's the wheel with the offending puncture. And then once that wheel is out of the frame or the forks, you want to try and put the bike somewhere soft, or even if there's a fence close by, you could hook the handlebar over that to keep it upright. Alternatively, if there is nothing at all soft, I would actually probably advise, and this is the only time I would say doing so, is turn the bike upside down so you're not gonna risk damaging any carbon dropouts. Because a little bit of moisture in there sometimes can actually delaminate the carbon. Now to repair our punctured inner tube, we are gonna need a few different tools. And thanks to our friends at Topic, I do have a few here with me. So I've got myself a CO2 canister, also a pair of tire levers, as well as some glueless patches here. Of course, you can replace the whole inner tube if you so wish, but that's not necessarily that environmentally friendly because after all, rubber does grow on trees. And also in my back pocket, I've got myself a mini pump too, because well, you can run out of canisters, but you can never run out of air. Take a closer look over the wheel, over the tire, and try and find any foreign objects which may well have penetrated the tire and then gone into that inner tube and given that puncture. One of the reasons why we line up logos with valves is for the reason, if you do find something in the tire, when you remove the inner tube, you know roughly the distance away from the valve where to look in the inner tube for that hole. So now we've done that and we've got nothing in the tire, you do have to take a little bit of care and attention there. It's a bit of glass or thorn, you could well cut your finger. So it's best to do it visually first. And then if you do have a pair of gloves on or something like that, just see if anything gets trapped. Then we want to remove half of the bead of the tire. There's no need to take the whole tire off necessarily. So grab your tire levers, and then it's simply a case of hooking them underneath one part of the bead, and then the other one underneath, and removing that side of the tire. Once the tire's off, you can remove that inner tube from the rim. Now you've removed the tube from the tire and the wheel, it's time to try and find out where that hole is. Now you could spend a great deal of time looking at the actual tube itself, trying to find it, but generally holes, they tend to be at the size of a pinprick and they're not that easy to find. So that's where either your mini pump comes in handy or alternatively, even your mouth. Now, as gross as it sounds, you can in fact inflate a Presta type valve by simply putting your lips around it and blowing it up. You're not gonna get up to any sort of pressure, but you may well be able to get it up to just enough pressure to find that hole. So this is why we are in fact gonna use our mini pump. And this is one of the reasons why I do always advise taking a pump with you on your ride, just to try and identify where that pesky puncture is. Now this hole is absolutely tiny. I did in fact have to inflate the tube by quite a margin as you can see. And then the only way by actually finding it, I had to hold it up to my face and I could feel just a tiny little stream of air coming out of that. So, got myself some sandpaper. I'm just gonna rough up that surface so that the self-adhesive patch that I use will work. Now, before you go ahead and stick that self-adhesive patch onto the inner tube, make sure that the area where you are gonna stick it has no grease or moisture on it, otherwise it's not gonna do its job effectively. So once it is there, make sure, of course, you peel back it ever so carefully and you're not getting your fingerprints all over it because that could affect the adhesion too put it onto the actual tube itself, making sure that the offending hole is in the central most part of that patch. Now, apply pressure onto the patch for about a minute so that it does stick as well as possible. At this point, don't be tempted to apply loads and loads of pressure into the inner tube to try and check your handiwork because you wouldn't be the first person out there to do it and the patch just come off because they do take a little bit of time just to, well, have a really good joint with the inner tube itself. Before we actually put the inner tube back inside of the carcass of the tire and the rim bed, we actually do want to put a small amount of air into the inner tube just to give it a little bit of shape so it doesn't get twisted or anything like that. And also it makes it just a little bit easier to put back inside. Put a few pumps of air in, nothing too much, but just enough just to give it a little bit of shape and then lock that valve done again. 
One final check to do before reinserting that inner tube is just to gently and carefully run your fingers around inside of that tire, trying to find the foreign object that may well have caused that puncture. It's not always gonna be in there, but sometimes they do go through. Also check the rim tapes too. Make sure that any spoke heads are fully covered up, so the spoke nipples also. And also pay particular close attention around the valve because quite often if you've got yourself an aluminium rim, they can become a little bit sharpened in there and just wear away. Uh, if you do have a puncture there around a valve, quite often they're very difficult to repair properly. This one though is all okay and we're ready to go ahead and fit that tube again. So in goes the valve. I always do valve first. Some people out there like to finish at the valve, but I've always done it with the valve first. And well, I've done it for donkey's years now. And it's simply a case of putting that inner tube inside of the tire. What's important here is it doesn't become twisted or out of shape or anything like that. That's why putting those initial few bits of air in really do help. Once it's on, just check around the inside in between the actual bead of the tire and the inside wall of the rim there and make sure that none of the inner tube is poking out because if it is when it comes to putting in more and more pressure that can quite often give you a pinch puncher uh, and those look like a couple of snake bites if you like so two holes pretty pretty close apart normally about a centimeter apart and that's just the impact of the bead and it's not allowing the tube to fully inflate that causes it but this one we're all okay. Inner tube fitted, not pinched. Now it's time to inflate that inner tube. So unscrew your locking nut there on the valve and either use a CO2 canister or a mini pump. Now I'm not lazy enough to be honest today. It's a beautiful day to use the CO2 canister. So I'm gonna use a mini pump. Now I've got a handy little gauge on here too. So I know exactly how much pressure I'm putting in. The great thing about using a mini pump actually, in my opinion, something like this, Although on a lot of CO2 canisters you can do the same, you can actually control how much air is going in and at the same time make sure that nothing is getting trapped in between the tyre and the side of the rim. Now once you have put a decent amount of pressure into the tyre, normally around about 40 or 50 psi, you can have a look to make sure the tyre is seated onto the rim okay. Now an easy way to do that is to use the sidewall as an indicator. It should look the same all the way around just above the braking surface or edge of the rim like it does on this one. If it's not, you can simply wrestle it into position like so with your thumbs. It's kind of like wiggling it just to allow it to pop into the right place. There's no harm in doing it. Uh, normally though, just as you inflate it, particularly at home with a track pump, it will just find its natural position. But when we're out on the road, we don't have that luxury necessarily, but it's just worth doing it as a precaution. Once you're happy that the tyre is perfectly seated onto the rim, it's just a case of reinflating that inner tube to your desired pressure before reinserting it into your bike. The final piece of the jigsaw now is just to refit the wheel into position. Now, I always like to do this without the bike being turned upside down. I see loads of people putting in wheels upside down. And well, my reason for not doing it is that you don't allow the bike to actually find its natural place onto the axle of a wheel. And also, it's just not the natural thing to do, is it? Because the loop of the chain on the rear derailleur can often be quite confusing because it's not in its logical place. So with all that aside then, let's put the wheel into position. And on this one here, I've got myself a through axle. So I'm just gonna use the built-in or some removable tool, if you like, to actually torque that up correctly. There we are, how to fix a puncture on your bike at the side of the road. And you don't even have to use a brand new inner tube. How good is that? Right, let me know what you think of this video down there in the comments section below. And also remember to like and share this video with your friends too. Give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click that little notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live on the channel. Also, remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got a whole heap of goodies for you to check out, especially during the month of July. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here? And well, me, I'm gonna carry on with my bike ride. All the best. <laughs>